Hello, this is Jared Niemi with a mini lecture on the lack of fit F test for testing linearity in a regression model. Previously, we've discussed a general F test for comparing two models, a reduced model versus a full model. In this uh, construction of this general F test, we did the following procedure. We looked at the error sums of squares for these two models. We took the difference there, and that was called the extra sum of squares. We looked at the number of parameters in the two models and we took the difference and we called that the extra degrees of freedom. We used those quantities in the numerator of this F statistic and the denominator was the estimate of the variance for the full model. And we compared this F statistic to an F distribution with degrees of freedom that were in the numerator, the extra degrees of freedom, and the denominator, the degrees of freedom associated with estimating the variance in the full model. That was the number of observations n minus the number of parameters for the mean in the full model. All right, so this is a general methodology for comparing a full versus a reduced model. And we're going to be using this methodology for constructing this lack of fit F test for regression. And so I want to remind you about this ANOVA model because this lack of fit F test is really about comparing a regression model to an ANOVA model. All right, so the ANOVA model was saying that we had capital I groups, so subscript little i, which indicates the group goes from one up to capital I, and that the observations that we have have a mean that depends on the group membership and a common variance amongst all the groups. So that was the ANOVA model. The regression model then says, and now I'm putting the notation here in the same framework as the ANOVA model, it says the observations here are uh, are independent and that observations within a group have the same mean but that the means between these groups have a relationship and that relationship is given by this line this beta naught plus beta 1 xi where xi is the explanatory variable for the for group i so the idea here is that you have multiple observations per group but all those observations have the same value for the explanatory variable that's in fact what puts them in a group Right? And that, then after we've accounted for that line, we have a common variance uh, sigma squared. All right, so the key thing here is that when we're going to try to turn this into the framework of the general F test is to, to determine which one is a full and which one is a reduced model. So key pieces of information here are is that the regression model is in fact reduced, and this is how you can see it. You can see it because, first off, the ANOVA model has capital I parameters for the mean. Right, we have a different mean for each group. There are capital I groups, so there are capital I parameters for the mean. The regression model has two parameters for the mean, right? beta naught and beta 1. These are the parameters that describe the line. So if capital I here is more than 2, which it typically is in an ANOVA setting, then we have uh, more parameters for the mean in the ANOVA model than we do for the regression model. Now this alone would not make the ANOVA model full and the regression model a reduced version of that, but it turns out that we can write mu i is equal to beta naught plus beta 1 xi. Right, so the ANOVA model, if we were to plug in this beta naught plus beta 1 xi, if we were just to plug this one in right there, right, then the ANOVA model would become the regression model. And therefore, the regression model is a reduced version of that ANOVA model. Now, when we're going to run this general F test, the key thing is that the small p-values indicate a lack of fit. That is, the null hypothesis here is that the reduced model is adequate to describe your data. And if the p-value is small, that would give evidence against that null hypothesis in saying that the regression model is not adequate. So this straight line is not adequate. <clears throat> the other key thing to point out is that this lack of fit to F test does require that you have multiple observations at at least some of the explanatory variable values. So you cannot run this test at all if you don't have any duplication of your explanatory variable values. And the more duplication you have, the more uh, repeats you have within a particular explanatory variable value, the more powerful your test will become. All right, so let's look at an example. So here's an example that we looked at in the simple linear regression mini lecture. And this is uh, individuals who've been diagnosed with a disease. 
and we're looking at the number of years since they've been diagnosed on the x-axis and their telomere length on the y-axis. The telomere is part of the chromosome, it's the end of the chromosome, and it appears that as the years progress that on average the telomere length decreases. Now we can think about this as being an ANOVA model, and that's what's pictured here using these box plots, where we have three individuals who've all been diagnosed uh, one year out, five individuals here that are two years out, two individuals that are three years out, and so forth. So we have multiple observations per explanatory variable value. And again, these points have been jittered here just so that they don't lie on top of each other. But our actual data says that these three observations had exactly one year since their diagnosis. All right, so the question then becomes is, uh, so here's an ANOVA model, and the question is whether this regression model, where we have a straight line fit, is a sufficient representation of the model, or of the data. That is, is it adequate to describe the data? <clears throat> All right, so now in this case, uh, we no longer think about the data as providing groupings, but instead that there's some, that the data have an explanatory variable value that's continuous, and we're just fitting a line to these continuous uh, explanatory variable values, and seeing how good that line is at fitting our data. All right, so we can run this in SAS by adding this lack fit option into our PROC REG statement. So if we add that lack fit statement in, then our ANOVA table gets augmented by these two lines. In particular, the relevant line is this lack of fit line. This lack of fit line, uh, these two lines together actually, basically uh, correspond to the calculations for the general F test. Uh, looking at this regression versus ANOVA model. And the upshot is this p-value at the end. This p-value in this case was 0.7. And again, this represents uh, the probability of observing a test statistic as or more extreme than that observed if the null hypothesis is true. In this case, if the regression model is in fact true. And here it seems like there's no evidence for a lack of fit. That is, the regression model seems adequate to describe our data. So in summary, the lack of fit F test in regression just tests this assumption of linearity in the model. It does need multiple observations at at least some of the explanatory variable values in order to run the test at all. The small p value will indicate a lack of fit, that is, that the means uh, of these groupings do not appear to be linear. But this doesn't describe what is the right correct relationship. So it might be that you need to transform your response. So you might want to try a log. It might be that you need to transform your explanatory variable values. Maybe taking a log, maybe adding an additional term, uh, in particular adding perhaps a squared term to get a quadratic trend, or perhaps there are other explanatory variables that are important for modeling the data but have not been included in the analysis. Thank you.